Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Well, Happy New Year to each and every one of you. Amen. Amen. It's good to see all of you here today and excited. I want you just to tell your neighbor and say, Happy New Year. Tell your neighbor, say, you're looking good. You're smelling good. You look fresh. <laughs> Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm glad that I'm seated next to you. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, you are blessed. Say, whether you know it or not, but you are blessed. Tell your neighbor, say, in 2018, you are blessed. Say to your neighbor, you're going to excel in this year. No maganja ni. Because God is on your side. Say, say to your neighbor, I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's good to see all of you on the first Sunday of the year. Come on, give yourself a round of applause. Hallelujah. What a joy. I know some of you, you know, you've been traveling and now you're back. And we hope that, you know, you're not just back on the first Sunday of the year. Amen. We, we hope that, you know, you will be here all the other Sundays just like Mr. Sconde has been saying. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So this year, it's going to be a wonderful year. It's a wonderful year. I, I sense it in my spirit that we are going to see extraordinary things that are going to take place. Amen, somebody. We're going to see you, you know, live that extraordinary life that God has for you. Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for what you have done for us. We thank you for what you have to go through, what you had to go through in order for us to be saved, in order for us to prosper, in order for us to have an extraordinary life. We thank you, Lord, that you are still the same God that is still 
concerned and is still uh, interested in us having the Zoe life of God. And Father, we give you the praise this morning. And Lord, I thank you that the blood of Jesus has never lost its power. The blood of Jesus is still powerful even this morning. And Lord, I pray that even as I'm going to share the word of God this morning, I pray that let revelation knowledge flow freely, unhindered and unchecked by any satanic force. I pray that, Lord, you may use me, speak through my mouth, and think through my mind. None of me and all of you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. I pray that somebody's life may be changed in this house. Father, I pray that burdens may be removed and yokes may be destroyed because of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I thank you that, Lord, that this message that I'm about to minister this morning, I believe that it will set somebody on course to prosper this year, O oh God, in a way that they have never experienced before, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that our ears are ready to hear word from heaven in the name of Jesus. Because it is that one word from heaven that will change our lives forever. We give you the praise and we honor you this morning. And it's in the name of Jesus that I pray and let somebody shout amen. amen. Come on, somebody shout amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you this morning about living the extraordinary life. Living the extraordinary life. You know, I have just found out, or I have found out many years ago, but the Lord reminded me again that I have to live an extraordinary life. An extraordinary life is not just for a selected few, but an extraordinary life is for all of us who know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Say, I am determined to live the extraordinary life. Come on, somebody say it like you mean it. Say, I am determined to live the extraordinary life. Say, the extraordinary life is my portion. It is for me. It is for me. So God wants us to live the extraordinary life. We are meant to excel in life. You know, some people think that a certain group of people are supposed to excel. I know that when you are in God, you are supposed to excel. You are supposed to excel spiritually. You are supposed to excel physically. You are supposed to excel economically. You are supposed to excel emotionally. Because God has made you that way. Say amen, somebody. For we are of an extraordinary God. Now, let me say this to you, that you and I, if we are born again, or we carry the God DNA. That means the stuff that makes God God is in the inside of you this morning. Say amen, somebody. What makes God God is in the inside of you. When Jesus said that I am cutting a new covenant, he was saying what I carry, I'm giving it to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you have and you carry the DNA of God. You are God fashioned. The scripture says that you are not just a mere man, but you are a God with a small g. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible says that he made you a little lower than Elohim. Come on, somebody. So you're not just an ordinary person. Tell a neighbor, say, I'm not just an ordinary person. Tell a neighbor, say, I might look ordinary, but I carry the stuff that makes God God. I don't know about you, but that excites me. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? Tell a neighbor, say, I have the DNA of God. Tell a neighbor, say, I look like God. I have the characteristics of my father. So you carry the God DNA. You are God fashioned. And not only are you God fashioned, but you're also in the God class. You are in the God class. That's why when God created Adam in the garden, he did not just create him like he did all the other animals. All the other animals, he said, let there be, let there be, let there be. But when it came to man, he had to take some time on the last day. And he put this man together. And not only did he put him together from dirt, but the scripture says that he breathed or he breathed the breath of life in him. And then man became a living entity. Man became a speaking spirit. Man became, you know, a, a, he carried the spirit of God in the inside of him. 
So not only are you just a man with a God DNA, but you are in the Godless. And if we are in the Godless, we do know that if our God is an extraordinary God, that means we have to live an extraordinary life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I know some of you 2017 messed you up. Some of you, you know, your cousins and your family told you that you are just a nobody. I know some of you, you have been told for so many years that you are a hot cop or a dumb cop. And I know some of you have been told that you will never achieve anything. But when you are in Christ, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Say amen, somebody. You are supposed to live an extraordinary life. Your life is not just supposed to be ordinary. Because you're not an ordinary person. You know, when God, when Jesus was on that cross, he was on that cross so that he can put some extra on your ordinary life so that you can become an extra, extraordinary person. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you're not just a nobody. Say, I'm not just a nobody. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm not just a nobody. You're not just a nobody. And God wants you to live the extraordinary life. And what is this extraordinary life? It is a life of fulfillment. God wants you to be fulfilled in 2018. Say amen, somebody. Amen. God wants you to prosper in 2018, regardless of the economic recession that we might be facing in this country. God wants you to prosper regardless of what you might be facing in 2018. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I know a lot of people, you know, they keep on saying, oh, 2018 or 2017 or 2016 is my year. It's my year of this and this and this. It's all good. But you know, you need to know how to navigate through that life. Because whether we like it or not, whether we speak it or not, the bottom line is that the enemy will always throw things at us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You know, I know I've heard people say, this is my victorious year. I mean, I know it is your victorious year. But guess what? There is an enemy that is waiting for you. That wants to prove that this is not your victorious year. But let me tell you, the Bible says that if you are in Christ... The old is gone and the new has come. That means, you know, if you are in Christ, whatever that made Christ to tick is making you to tick. The Bible says that Jesus was facing a whole lot of challenges. But in the midst of all those challenges, he emerged victorious. He lived the extraordinary life in the midst of all the challenges. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Go to the book of First uh, Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written... Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. The things that God has prepared for them that love them. Come, I mean, that love him. Let me see those that love God in this house here. The Bible says that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God has has prepared for them that love him. The Bible says that God has prepared for us greater things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 2018 is going to be a great year because God has prepared great things for you in 2018. You know, some people read this scripture and say that this scripture is talking about the sweet you know, by and by. Some people think that this scripture is talking about, you know, what is going to be happening in heaven. I have good news for you this morning. That what God was speaking about in this particular scripture, he was saying that the Holy Spirit is going to open up your mind. The Holy Spirit is going to open up your spiritual eyes and you are going to see greater things that God has in store for you. Say amen, somebody. God has got great things for you in store this year. Say amen. And this is the life that God wants you to live. He wants you to live a life that is led of the Holy Spirit, an extraordinary life. Say amen, somebody. And in verse 10, he says, But God had revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit search all things, yes, the deep things of God. The Bible says, Whatever God has for us in store, it's been revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. We are not living a mysterious life. We know in our Noah that God wants us to live an extraordinary life. 
I don't know about you, but I am ready to live an extraordinary life. I am ready in 2018 to excel in every area of my life. It doesn't matter what my boss said. It doesn't matter what my friends are saying about me. It doesn't matter what my church members are saying about me. But I am going to excel and I'm going to live an extraordinary life in 2018 because it is my portion. Say amen, somebody. And this extraordinary life that God is promising us in his word is not necessarily just for those that are educated. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because some people say, but Pastor George, I cannot live an extraordinary life because everybody else that I see who are doing well in this life are either educated or were born in the right side or in the right side of town. But this extraordinary life that God wants us to live, it is for everybody that believes the word of God. Say amen, somebody. This extraordinary life that I'm talking about, it is for everybody that dare to trust God. This extraordinary life, it is for a stay-at-home mom. This extraordinary life, it is for a housewife. This extraordinary life that I'm talking about, it is for business people. This extraordinary life that I'm talking about, it is for politicians. It is for policemen, it is for truck drivers, it is for mechanics, it is for students, it is for those that are cleaning toilets. Say, I am determined to live an extraordinary life. Come on, somebody say it. I am determined to live an extraordinary life. The word extraordinary is defined as beyond what is usual. That means you and I this year have to live beyond the usual. You know, we always say that House of Faith is, we do church unusual. You know, we live an extraordinary life. So the word extraordinary be, means beyond what is usual. Extraordinary means exceptional. Exceeding the common measure. The synonyms of the word extraordinary is remarkable. Amazing. Marvelous. Unimaginable. So that means you and I in 2018, we need to get ready for a remarkable lifestyle. We need to get ready for an amazing lifestyle. And I know that people told you that, you know, the way things are in your life right now, you can never have a remarkable lifestyle. But if you are in God, you can have an extraordinary life. Say amen, somebody. The synonym of the word extraordinary is marvelous, unimaginable. You know, this is the kind of life that God wants us to live. He said, I will do exceedingly, abundantly, above everything that God does is always supernatural. It's always supernormal. And so if God is operating in the department of the supernormal, that means you and I are supposed to operate in that department as well. Say amen, somebody. And so that's the kind of life that God wants us to live. A life of success and a life of abundance. A supernatural life. Just like God wants us to live. Say amen, somebody. And in order to show that God has called us to live an extraordinary life, we have a deep yearning in us to live an extraordinary life. Every one of us, or most of us at least, have a deep yearning to live an extraordinary life because that's how we were created. You know, I look at my son. He's at a stage right now where he wants to do certain things by himself. I see him, you know, he would... Because he wants to live an extraordinary life, he's tired of just, you know, sleeping all the time in that cot. What I saw him do lately is that, you know, he gets himself up and he holds on to the top of that cot and he looks at the TV and he even laughs at himself. And I know because of that deep yearning of wanting to live an extraordinary life, the next moment I'm going to see that young man doing this because he believes that extraordinary lifestyle will require him to walk. Say amen, somebody. So you also have that deep yearning in the inside of you. That, you know, I might be a teacher, but I'm not just a normal teacher. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I might be a business person, but I'm going to be a business person that excels. You know, I'm, I, I might be a housewife, but I'm going to be a housewife that is stylish and is extraordinary. That all, when all the housewives looks at me, all the ladies would want to be like a housewife. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's the extraordinary life that God wants us to live. 
but it's in the inside of you. That extraordinary life that says, you know, I am a soccer player, but I'm going to be a different soccer player. You know, I am a keyboard player, but I'm going to be an extraordinary keyboard player, my brother. You know, and that's why when we serve in the church here, we need to serve with all our might because, you know, when you serve with all your might, the, the extraordinary in the inside of you gets kicked in and all of a sudden you do things that other people cannot do. Say amen, somebody. And so God has given us the deep yearning in the inside of us to live this extraordinary life. And the reason why many people are not living this extraordinary life is because you have been beaten so long. The stuff that you're talking about, it is not for me. But I've got good news for you this morning. That the God that shaped you, the God that made you, has given you a promise. And that promise will come to pass. And all you've got to do is keep on believing God for the extraordinary life. Say amen, somebody. And all you have to do is to believe. The Bible says that all things are possible to those that believe. Say amen, somebody. There were some things that were not happening right for me in 2017. But I have made a decision that I'm going to step into 2018 with so much vigor and so much belief in the inside of me that I'm still going to believe God for more, more things in my life. Say amen. amen. How many of you are saying, Pastor George, you know, I might have been beaten so many times in my life by circumstances and by things, but I'm ready to believe God for more this year. And that's what God wants you to do. He wants you to get up from your, the, the ashes of defeat, man. God wants you to wake up and say, you know what? There is light at the end of the channel. God wants you to live an extraordinary life. Now, let me give you some biblical uh, examples of extraordinary people in the scriptures. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, we see the mind of God and we see what God had planned for his people. It says, and God blessed them. So this is after Adam was created and Eve was created. The Bible says he did not just only create him, but after creating him, he blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish, over the fowl of the air, 